Hello Steelers, and welcome to this video which I'm going to show you how I built and painted these 15mm Panzer 3s. These are from Plastic Soldier Company and you get 5 in a box with multiple variants available within the sprues. So much so, that it actually took me quite a while to decide on which variant I was going to go for. I finally settled on the J, as this was the most numerous variant of all the Panzer 3s produced. I'll put a link for all the products that I use in this video in the description below. The first thing to do, as I did, is decide on your variant and then pay very careful attention to the coloured guide on the instructions, as this tells you exactly which parts you'll require for those types of tank. Unfortunately, being a silly billy, I mistook the glasses plate for the later version and I used that. However, it's not massively noticeable and I managed to get it correct on three of the models, so all's well that ends well, right? Once you've separated the pieces from the sprues, it's time to clean them up. I find cutting all the pieces off for one tank at a time is a smooth way of working. You could clip all the pieces from all five tanks, but it can get quite tedious. Working on one tank at a time means you have a break between clipping, cleaning and then gluing. I then clean off the nubs of the plastic from the sprue using the sharp edge of a scalpel. Scraping it away from yourself and also try to be careful, just so not to take chunks out of the actual model, or yourself. Don't worry if you do, well at least out of the model because these can be hand waved away as battle damage or other dents. I build the turret first, this is nice and easy, and the PSC kits go together like a dream. The joints are flush, and there's very little difficulty working out where everything goes. I use liquid poly cement, as it's easy to apply with the brush, and it doesn't leave blobs like if you use the tube cement. There are quite a number of hatches on the turret, and also on the side of the hull, so make sure you dry fit these first, as there's a very specific way that they fit. Check a reference photo online, or even the box art, just to see which way up the vision slits are. Measure twice, cut once, and all that. The hull is moulded in four parts, including the two tracks, so this is quite a nice easy kit to build. I think PSC changed their tracks after a lot of people complained about the earlier kits being too difficult, with each track having two parts. These one part tracks are really nice, and they work a treat. So, with the tracks in place, it's time to seal the hull with the upper part. Again, the location for this is obvious, and it fits in perfectly with no mess on the joints. I use a little bit of liquid cement just to brush over the joints though, just to add some strength. The fiddliest part of this build is actually the spare wheels. These are very small, so cleaning them takes some care. But they do go together nicely, and they're a good addition to have, as is the other stowage in the kit, such as the extra tracks and jerry cans. Once the basic model is complete, I use super glue to hold the tank in place on an old paint bottle. The super glue is brittle and it will snap off easily at the end of the painting session, so don't worry too much about it. I also blue tack the turret to a piece of plastic ready for painting. A lot of people don't like basing their tanks, but I do for various reasons which I won't go into. But I make my bases from a 3mm thick piece of plastic card, measured and cut to the correct size of the vehicle. I'll then clip the corners off using my clippers, and then using a file to make them more rounded. The base is then given a coat of Vallejo's flat earth, and it's left to dry. You can now see here where I've added some more stowage to the tank. This is resin stowage which I got from Red Dog UK from eBay. This was simply cut out and glued in place with super glue. I then begin the process of actually painting the tank. Some people use primers, and you can, and I have done, and I do, however, in this case, I just didn't bother. I simply use the base colour of the tank as a primer, in this case, Vallejo's German Grey. I use a big brush and make sure the coverage is good, getting right into the nooks and crannies of the tracks and the wheels and the other details. If you need it, do a second coat once the first is dry. There, you've got an instant primer and base coat. Don't forget to paint the turret at the same time. You could use an airbrush for this, but I'm trying to show you a quick and easy way of painting tanks, so this is why I'm using a brush. Once the paint is thoroughly dry, it's time to break out the Null and Oil Bite Games Workshop. This is a black wash, which works its way into all the details on the tank, and is great for the German early war grey tanks. Give the model a liberal covering, and make sure you use your brush to draw out any areas that are starting to pull. Don't worry too much, as we'll cover this area with a dry brush anyway. Just make sure the entire tank is covered in Nuln. Then when the Nuln oil is completely dried, it's time to add some decals. I do this at this stage, so the dry brushing and weathering will blend them into the model better. It's just a simple task of cutting out the decals you want, 
putting them in water until you are able to move them off the backing paper. Then use a small brush to get them into the correct position and also some micro salt to soften the decal and fit it to the contours of the vehicle. Whilst the decal's dry, it's time to get back to the base. Haters might want to turn away here. I use undiluted PVA glue painted over the base to fix the static grass in place. I don't use an applicator. I find that blowing on the grass once it's in position is enough to help it stand up. But if you have one, use it. With the base completed, it's time to start finishing the tank off. I use Vallejo's Neutral Grey as a dry brush. Dip the brush in the paint, then wipe off as much as possible. You really want barely any paint on the brush at all. It's better not to have enough and work it up than have too much and spoil the look of the tank. Using the brush just sweep across the tank going against the grain of any raised areas, especially edges and other sticky up bits. You'll see the grey gradually getting picked up on these areas. Just be careful and don't do too much. Stop when you feel you have the effect that you want. And now it's time to begin working on the tracks. I do this in a three stage process starting with black. This is painted roughly across all the track areas that I can see, including the spare tracks added as stowage. Just make sure you have pretty good coverage and try to be neat, although it doesn't matter if you aren't as we can cover all this with weathering later. Whilst the black is drying on the tracks, I turn my attention back to the stowage. I paint the various bags, packs and blankets in different greens and browns. Use whatever you want here as the crew would pick up anything on their journeys. It's also good to do different colours just to break up the grey colour of the tank itself and also just to give the model a bit of interest. When the base colour on the stowage is dry, I then give it a good coat of Agrax Earthshade. Similar to Nuln Oil, this is a great wash that is brown in colour, so it looks great with organic materials such as the blankets and the packs. As the Agrax dries on the stowage, I then go back for the second part of the tracks, painting Vallejo's oily steel roughly over the black. This is like a heavy dry brush, but with more paint on the brush so you can get a good but not complete coverage. This will be on exposed areas, so it looks like parts that have worn down to shiny steel. Then the third and final part of the tracks is just to give them a wash in Flory Wash Rust. This is a clay wash which gets right into the nooks and crannies and dries in a nice dull manner, despite being quite bright when it goes on. You could use any rust wash for this, but I like the Flory washes so I thoroughly recommend them. Then I paint in the highlights on the stowage using the base colours. This will be the raised areas and the folds in the cloth. I find that the Agrax wash darkens the rest of the base coat enough that the highlights stand out nicely again once you've passed over them. Now I leave the tank to completely dry before starting with weathering. At this point you can add as little or as much weathering as you want, but I always add some at least, even if it's just subtle tide marks like I do, as no tank is ultra clean, even during training. I like to add dust and water tide marks using Vallejo's khaki dry brush liberally across the bottom of the hull and around the tracks. This is the areas that would see most dust in reality. This also breaks up the German grey colour again and it adds interest to the vehicle model. I varnish all of my models as they got a lot of handling in games and for this I use Windsor & Newton's Professional Artist Matte Spray. This is the best on the market in my opinion. Just spray it all over the model and allow it to dry. Then I super glue the tanks to their bases and I ignore the haters and we're done. That's it. Nice and easy and they look okay from a tabletop distance. The PSC tanks are really nice kits and they're a pleasure to build and come with a huge amount of choice for wargamers and modelers alike. I hope this video has been useful. If so, please let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget, you can help support the channel by joining my Patreon or channel membership which allow you early access to all my videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Storm of Steel video.